Hi, today Stephen Legary and I are going to talk about mycorrhizae, what they are, how they benefit plants, and what you can do without spending a penny to increase their numbers and effectiveness in your garden. We'll also talk about mycorrhizal amendments, when they may be helpful, and some of the limitations they have that you may want to take into consideration before purchasing them. So Stephen, to get things started, why don't you talk about what mycorrhizae are and how they benefit plants. Mycorrhizae is a symbiotic relationship between plants and fungi. Over 80% of plant species have this relationship with the fungi. The spores or fungi responsible can be found all over the world in most soil types. So how does this work? The mycorrhizal fungi within the soil, once in contact with the roots, will actually infect the root. What happens then is the fungi hyphae or the, the, the root system of the fungus will extend into the soil matrix and it'll get into the nooks and crannies mining water and elements or nutrients such as phosphorus. Now in return what the plant gives the fungus is the sugars from photosynthesis hence the beneficial relationship. The plant gets water and nutrients it normally could not access and the fungus gets the sugars that it can't produce for itself. The increased nutrients generally results in an increased vigor and production of your plants. In correlation with the increased vigor and the physical structure of the hyphae around the roots themselves, generally these plants that have these associations are much more resistant to pathogens. There are two ways that the mycorrhizal fungi can actually infect the roots of the plants. The first is ectomycorrhizae, which basically means that the fungi surrounds the root cells and this transaction happens between uh, the cells of the fungi and the plant. This is generally the way that trees do it, and most woody type plants. Endomycorrhizae is the second way that it infects, and in fact the fungus actually goes within the cell of the plant, puncturing it, and then this, this relationship occurs. And this is by far the most common of the two different ways that this infection can happen. Thank you, Stephen. Now I'd like to talk about the things you can do to increase the number and effectiveness of mycorrhizae in your soil. And first of all, I'd like to emphasize that mycorrhizal fungi are naturally occurring and plentiful in most soils, but there are things you can do to help them along. First of all, you want to avoid disturbing the soil as much as possible. Any disruption to the soil disturbs the mycorrhizal hyphae and therefore limits their effectiveness. And this means limiting practices like tilling and double digging. In addition, dramatic changes to soil pH can kill the fungi, so be careful with applications of lime and sulfur. To increase the effectiveness of mycorrhizae, make sure not to overwater or overfertilize. They actually work best when nutrients and water are not plentiful, and this will encourage the formation of mycorrhizal associations, which may not develop if nutrients are overly plentiful. In particular, limit soluble phosphate fertilizers, which can inhibit mycorrhizal associations. In fact, if nutrients are too abundant, mycorrhizae can become parasitic in that they're not contributing nutrients to the plant, but they're still taking sugars from the plant roots. To increase the diversity of mycorrhizae in your garden, grow a wide variety of plants. And finally, both compost and mulch are great for mycorrhizae. The beneficial bacteria in compost assist mycorrhizae in their activities. And mulch, especially a coarse wood chip mulch, provides a great home for spores and encourages a broad diversity of mycorrhizae. So all of these things can be done without buying a mycorrhizal amendment. But Stephen, why don't you talk about when mycorrhizal amendments might be helpful? Excellent tips, Patrick, on increasing the concentrations of mycorrhizal fungi within your soil. I'd like to step back here for a moment though. I want to talk about the stress response that fungi have. See, when you see a mushroom or the hyphae within the soil, times are good, conditions are right. But when they get stressed, they produce what's called a spore, which is basically a stasis pod. This is their way of surviving when conditions are not right. For instance, if the soil dries out a little too much, gets a little too cool, or other conditions that are just not right for fungal development. These spores are like time capsules. While the conditions aren't quite right, they'll stay like that. When conditions improve, they'll come out and continue to grow in their reproductive phase. So what some companies try to do, and have done, is they collect these spores. And what they're able to do then, is use those spores to inoculate soils. Now most potting soils today 
are soilless mixtures. And in most cases, they're actually required to be pasteurized in order to ship. What this pasteurization does is it removes all the fungi and beneficial uh, bacterium within the soil to help prevent the spread of diseases. But what that does is it means we have none of the beneficial ones in there as well. What these products are able to do is to reintroduce the f beneficial fungi right back into the soil. So if you have sterilized soil from either like say too much fungicide or pasteurization, assuming you've removed the reason why they've been removed from the soil, you can reintroduce them. So Patrick, what are some of the limitations of these products? That's a great question, Steve. To start off, I'd like to return to a point I made earlier, which is that mycorrhizal fungi are both plentiful and naturally occurring in most soils. In fact, you likely have dozens of species of mycorrhizal fungi already in your garden, whereas most amendments have only a few species. In addition, the species that you have in your garden are already well adapted to your growing conditions and the plants you're growing. Another thing to consider is that though mycorrhizal fungi are very resilient within the soil, it may be less so in an amendment. Keep in mind that those amendments are packaged, stored, and shipped across the country. And during that process, they can be exposed to excessive heat, which can kill them. So it's not uncommon for the fungi in these amendments to be dead on arrival when they arrive at your door. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, a number of studies have shown that mycorrhizal amendments are not effective in real life growing conditions when compared against a control. For all of these reasons, I've chosen not to use these amendments over the years. Yet I'm very confident that mycorrhizae are plentiful in my garden and they're playing a very important role. In closing, I'd like to thank you for watching and also thank Stephen for his contribution. I imagine that this video will spark some discussion, so please leave comments below if you'd like to share your thoughts on mycorrhizae. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.